Go. So Rebecca, we've reached number 10 of Nancy Klein's 10 components of a thinking environment. The effort that this moves into share screen mode, mode to say there is diversity. And in a very few words, adding quality through difference. Nancy Klein in the book, without going into too much detail, says adding quality because of the differences between us, because of the differences between us. Diversity, not the same as equality. We've talked about that earlier. That was about treating people fairly and equally. This is about diversity expressly. And again, I'll say that adding quality because of the differences between us. Where does that take you? I think this is quite important, isn't it? If we're all the same, then we're probably likelihood is that we have the same ideas or if we come from the same background, where if we incorporate people and groups who are different to us, then we get different ideas, get different solutions. And it makes things more interesting. It makes things more likely, you know, to change things. I think there's a lot of value in bringing people from different groups and who are different to us into our environment and communicating with them. And I think the obvious, and it's too superficial sometimes, way to view diversity is color of face, gender, or various variations of gender, um, whatever other obvious physical, you're different to us. But you can have a room full of pink faced people and have a huge diversity because of background, because of uh, beliefs, values, experience, whatever. And I think in terms of a thinking environment, particularly a collective one, I think that a lot of the potential that could come from diversity is suppressed and is not made the best use of, either because there is sometimes a, an either a deliberate or a tacit desire to suppress diversity. Right, you're a room full of 40 to 50 year old pink faced men. How did that happen? Uh, I go into a lot of management meetings and say, well, I was talking to a, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit anecdotal again. I was talking to a, a, a friend and colleague of mine and she said when she worked with um, a steel company in the 70s, <clears throat> weren't too many of them at that time, by the way, um, she went as a senior managerial woman, one of the very few, to a particular depot and said, where's the ladies' loo? Um, well, we haven't got one because in the management suite, we're all blokes. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing, and when we, we, if we don't even recognise the differences between us, then we don't have that room for them to come and join us. You know, we, we have to make, and that's a really simple thing, isn't it? Actually having ladies and gents lose or lose that's open to anybody to use. Um, very, very basic things that make a huge difference. Like this links a little bit for me to that place as well, making sure that people feel welcome yeah. from different backgrounds, that they aren't going to be made to stand out or feel self-conscious about things and, and genuinely interested in what they have to say in their ideas. And again, yeah, I'm so, so I'm always really pleased with these conversations because it gives me thoughts that I wouldn't otherwise have had. I'm now thinking of somebody who I know who is um, a black guy, I'm not, and I found it really interesting to have conversations with him about being a successful young black guy and just getting a perspective on what that's like because I don't have that, I never will have that. Um, and he's told me some horrific stories that I won't go into now, it's not appropriate. But one of the things he's always said to me is, is, is Andrew, I'm not a representative of my colour. And the temptation sometimes is to say, well, Rebecca, you're a woman, what do you feel about this? Or, you know, person whose name isn't Roger, um, you're a black guy, what's your... That's so wrong to say, okay, represent half the human race or a third of it in this case. So... A thinking environment which is encouraged through diversity requires a bit of sophistication of thinking, not just the superficial. Mm, and being willing to engage other groups, or people who are different to us as well. Just because we're different doesn't mean we haven't got shared values around things or shared aims. And even if we don't agree with someone, we can still appreciate their contribution. And I think that's sometimes quite 
uh, it can be quite difficult or can be a concept that's hard to swallow for some people. You're different to me. You've got a different idea for me and therefore I don't respect what you're saying. It, it can be very easy to do that. And I think sometimes it's all right to say, hmm, I don't necessarily agree with that or I wouldn't have thought of that, but thank you for sharing. I like that idea. I think, yes, just because someone is different, they could share values. I think also we should welcome sometimes, in my view, the deliberate shaking up of things. I've brought people into this room that think different to us because I think that would be helpful. So I think sometimes we can say we might all look differently or have the appearance of being different to each other, but we all believe this. Well, sometimes that's still too cosy. Um, when I was doing some work with Cambridge University 30 odd years ago, one of the things they used to have was breakfast meetings where they would have a breakfast, a bit, late, a bit later than most breakfasts, but maybe at 9.30, and they would invite speakers in who might be a, well, they, I remember they had um, uh, an orchestral conductor, they had Kenneth Branagh. They, they, they used to invite people in to say, hey, look at this person who's so different to us. Um, let's see what we can learn from them. And I used to invite myself into these. So, oh, great, I'm staying over. I'll come and see you this tomorrow morning, time for that. And, and I thought that's great because they were looking to say, we're all pretty much the same. We've all been here rather a long time and we've got a bit of group think going on here. So that's at least fleetingly get a bit of input from someone very different to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's a really good point that you make there. And just because something's always been done that way or has been done that way for a long time does not necessarily mean it is still the best way or only way to do something. Uh, I love that the saying, every now and then it's good to place a question mark over the things we take for granted. Oh yeah. You can't do that unless you have somebody who's different to you or brings different experiences. You know, it makes it so much easier to do that when we have differences in the room. And again, not to do that recklessly, but to do it deliberately and purposefully. My first job was in local government and Local county council chief executives used to either be the outgoing or uh, legal person or treasurer, and that's how they always were in the right in the eighties. So if you're a county treasurer, you became chief executive for your last job and nice pension off you go. And then in that organisation in which I worked, in came a forty-two year old um, London borough former chief executive um, who was a career man. And went on to become a knight and a peer. And the whole culture went completely bonkers. Whoa, what's happening here? We don't usually get someone like him. Um, we always get people who like that. And that's nice and easy and straightforward. This guy's doing strange things here. He's shaking the place up. And, and I loved it. But a lot of people didn't. It was a very deliberate action on behalf of the senior councillors at that time to say, let's have an experiment. Let's be a bit radical. And as a thinking environment, obviously this is 1986, something like that, long before thinking environment thoughts came to my head, that only came to my head a few weeks ago. As a thinking environment, I loved it because it made me think in a different way and a more and a way in which things were more possible because we had diversity of thinking at the very top of the organization. Yeah, and that's, that's often the way of innovation, isn't it? That's how thing, new things get um designed or developed is because we've got something different we've got a different way of approaching it we've got somebody new on board with a different idea to us who we've not, you know we've not considered it before this is how we innovate challenge isn't it? it's like diversity being positive challenge i think a lot of people associate diversity either with i don't know superficial tokenist um earnest sometimes well meant nonsense because it's not truly felt or believed in or I feel likely to have a sustainable impact and that's a real shame because it could be done better than it should be um, diversity should be an energizer it should provide um, a form of impetus which wouldn't come from a group of people who are too samey Mm, I like that. Yeah, it brings energy. I quite like the impetus bit too. <laughs> but, you know, seriously, in a workplace, look at people around a meeting table. In what ways are they 
evidently, physically, observably similar. Age group, probably educational background, probably gender, um, largely. That's not always the case these days, to be fair. Mine is the HR industry, and that has become woman dominated in senior roles as well as less senior over the period I've been in it, which is a very welcome thing because I prefer women in the workplace to men. Um, but so many workplaces are evidently so similar and have lost their energy. Of, they get up and go as corporately got up and gone. Yeah. There's definitely a place for diversity in every setting. 